Hello everyone and welcome to the third and final portion of our command line utility series where we're talking about how we can basically communicate between a command line utility and a GUI application. And in the previous tutorial we talked about how CF message port could be used to directly communicate between our command line utility with our main application and we were at the point where basically we could change the text in our main application by simply running the command me utility. Now, I want to take this just a little step further because we had some issues in that video as well where, for example, if we were to quit our main application, we will never actually succeed in our command me utility. It's never going to actually launch the application. And there's also no way of actually customizing what we're sending. So as like a little final bonus, we'll throw in how we can take the string uh, from the command line tool. But um, the main thing that we want to talk about in this video is how we can actually launch that GUI application so that we can then use it uh, just from the command line tool always. We don't actually have to interact and launch our main application. So this is where we left off in the previous video with our, um, with our main .swift file in the tool itself. And so what we want to do in this video is actually set up the ability to launch that main application. So to do that, we can go ahead and set up a guard let, and we're going to try and essentially access our command line utility. And we're gonna, from the command line utility, figure out where our main application is located. And remember that in the command line uh, setup, we install a symlink into user local bin, and that symlink really points to the contents of our main application, right? Our actual command line tool is located within the contents of our main application. We're gonna to try to derive the path backwards from there. So to do this, we can say bundle.main.executable path. And this is gonna get where we're located in user local bin. And if we can't get this, I will just say uh, no symlink path, and we'll give it an exit code of one. All right, and then we also want to get the app path. And to do that, we're going to construct a URL. We're going to do file URL with path, and we're going to throw in our symlink here. Now, what we want to actually do with this is we want to resolve the symlinks and path. So saying resolving symlinks and path, that will give us a new URL back that resolves the symlink, meaning it will try and point us to where the actual symlink is, uh, well, where the actual um, executable is located <clears throat> in Finder. So from here, we can uh, just test this a little bit. I just want to demonstrate where uh, these things actually, or what these things actually represent. So let's go ahead and put in our else there. Let's try and run our application again. I just want to demonstrate what these things actually mean so that you have a good idea of what I'm going to be doing next. So let's go ahead and run our thing. And you can see that we get two printouts. One is for the symlink path, which like I said, was in user local bin and command me. That's where that symlink is located. But the resolved symlink is where our application actually holds on to the executable. And we can see from running from Xcode, this is in derived data. Here's the command me application. And within contents, shared support and command me, that's really what we're trying to do. So we really want to get up to this command me dot app path so that we can launch directly from there. So we essentially want a URL representing what I've highlighted. So we want to delete the last three path components on this last guy here. So to do that, we can simply say deleting path component or deleting last path component, deleting last path component, deleting last path component. And usually it's kind of nice if you make some kind of extension that just says deleting the last n path components. But um, anyway, that's going to delete the last three. Let's delete our prints here because we know that we have the right path now. And let's go ahead and actually talk about how we can launch an application. So there is a basically a tool called LS launch URL. Uh, well, spec is how we create it, but there's a open part to this. But how we define how we want to open the application is this LS launch URL spec. And we create this using a variety of things here. So the first thing is the app URL. So this is an unmanaged CF URL. So we, we're going to need to basically wrap our app path within this. So uh, let me actually change this to app URL. Uh, we're going to call this the unmanaged 
URL. And we will do an unmanaged, pass a unretained, and it's going to be an app path, uh, which is now, I just call the app URL, as CF URL. All right, so now we should have a unmanaged CF URL, which we can plop into here. All right, the items URL that we're passing in here, this is the items in which we want to send to the application when we're launching. And in this case, we don't have any, so we're just gonna pass nil. The, uh, we don't have any Apple events either, so we can actually inject Apple events into this launch, which is pretty interesting, but we don't have any for this example, so we're not gonna do any. Um, LS launch flags, we're not gonna have any either, but I do wanna point out um, some of the cool options that you have with this. So uh, again, LS stands for launch services, and basically uh, LS launch flags here is going to define a bunch of different options that we have when launching. Some of the interesting ones are uh, don't switch. So don't switch means, um, so by default, when we call uh, the open with this uh, spec that we're defining, it's going to open up the application and switch directly to it. But there is an option to actually don't switch such that we will keep terminal in the foreground and the main app won't launch in the foreground. There's also a bunch of options to like hide different apps, uh, async means that we'll kick this off and we won't actually wait for the application to even try launching. So it's basically just gonna fire and forget. Um, and with, without this flag by default, we're gonna wait until we get a successful application launch or at least an attempt to uh, launch the application. All right, um, so with that, let's go back to our main thing here and we're just gonna leave uh, those flags alone for the time being. We also, uh, this if we have an async reference, uh, there's a way of actually getting that out, but we're not using that option, so we're going to leave it as nil. All right, let's get the actual result from this, which is the spec. And with the spec, we can then call ls launch from URL spec, passing in the spec, and uh, we can use nil for that last parameter. So this is what's actually going to launch our application, uh, what we have here, and this actually needs to be passed by reference, so we have to convert it to var, and then we can use the handy dandy ampersand, ampersand to use it as an uh, unsafe mutable pointer. All right, so now that we've done that, uh, we're ready to go, and we should be able to launch an application out of this. So let's go ahead and we will run this, and I just kinda wanna see how far we get to uh, in this application. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this, and if I launch terminal, we should be in a state where I can run this and it does end up sending hello to the command line, so that's good, it still works as normal. If I quit the application and I run it again, I'm just gonna clear my console, run it again, and we can see something interesting happen, which was that the application itself did indeed launch, which is good, but then when we try to send the command, it failed. And the reason for this is that LS launch options is really just the base of launching the application. It doesn't infer that we've completely completed application did finish launching, right? Application did finish launching is called essentially after we launched the application, right? It did finish launching. And the command that we're writing here is specifying that we just launched the application. It's not that we had gone through our app, app delegates did finish launching uh, callback, right? So. Essentially what we need to do in this scenario is we need to set up this sort of polling mechanism to basically keep checking, hey, have we finished launching the application yet? And um, so in order to do that, we can kind of set up just this simple while loop timeout scenario. There might be other ways you can accomplish this as well, but um, this is a fairly basic approach and that's what we're gonna take here. So I'm just gonna define a sort of a basic timeout of three seconds and we're going to define an end time in which this will be the time that has to elapse before we just say, okay, I give up, the application is not gonna launch for some reason and I'm not gonna be able to communicate with it. So we're gonna get the current time, I'm gonna add a timeout to it such that end time is three seconds after that, and then while the end time is greater than the current time, then we will keep attempting the contents of this loop. So let's take the contents here, Oops. and we're gonna plop them into this while loop. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna swap out those 
three seconds that I kind of just hard coded in there before. So we're changing up our timeout here on the, the CF message port call itself. And uh, th though this timeout, I should mention, doesn't really exactly correspond to what we're doing here, right? So this timeout uh, that we're setting up in the while loop is really to indicate how many time, how much time we're going to wait in the number of attempts we do. The timeout that's here is more about the actual message port call itself, but regardless, it's easy enough to just kind of reuse the same values, and you can separate them if you want, but uh, it kind of doesn't matter. All right, from here, um, is there anything else we have to do? Um, so we've got our message port. The only other thing that uh, we should probably do is that if we uh, fail to actually get the message port, we probably shouldn't just keep attempting it in a tight, tight loop. You could, but it's a little bit unnecessary and that you're gonna be spinning a lot of cycles just to kind of make this happen. So what we can actually do here is just do a, a use sleep call, which is a sleep for a number of microseconds. And a microsecond is one millionth of a second. So um, if I wanna do 0.1 of a second, we can actually just say 100,000 microseconds and that will basically wait for every 0.1 of a second before attempting uh, to, to continue in the loop basically. And we no longer want to exit, we want to just continue, which will basically try to, to make us go back to the beginning of the loop again, reevaluate the condition, and then uh, we will try again. And so let's go ahead and run this as so, and we will hopefully succeed this time. So, um, and I guess the last thing that we really should be doing here is that um, if we are succeeding in the loop, uh, we will actually want to break out. So um, we'll make sure we put in a break there, right? So basically, if we successfully send the message, we do not want to attempt to send the message over and over and over again. So we should break out of the loop somehow as well. All right, now that we've accomplished that, let's go ahead and install our tool. We'll hop on over to terminal. Let's try out our command again. And it says you made it. Let's quit our application. Let's try and run it again. And we can see that we actually failed twice in this scenario, uh, but our application still finishes launching and eventually we do succeed in sending the message. So that's very nice. All right, let's go ahead and plop over back here again. And the last thing I wanna change is the ability for us to actually type in something into terminal when we're running the command line tool and basically take the arguments and pass that as the string and said instead. So to do that, we can use, uh, we're gonna oops, get the arguments, and there's a handy dandy command line uh, functionality in Swift where we can actually just pull the arguments directly as strings. And then I want to essentially just get the uh, first parameter or first argument for after the command line tool. So uh, by default, arguments work that uh, it's going to pass you the basically the, the path for the first argument and then the second argument in the, the arguments list or array in this scenario would be the actual parameter that you sent. So if I want to get the thing that I actually sent, I can say, did I pass more than a single argument, right? We're always going to have at least one argument. So we want to see, did we get more than one argument? If so, we will take that value and we'll just default to an empty string. All right, and we can then swap out this message for the message that I'm sending down here, which is this blind hello. And now we should be able to pass in whatever string we want. So let's go ahead and run this. And we will run the tool. So we'll successfully install that. I'm gonna quit the application. Let's go ahead and run this again. So here we go. We ran command me with no string or no parameter. And we had a check in our app delegate, just to refresh you from the last tutorial, that if the string was empty, we're just gonna fill it in with nothing. So that's why we get that result. Let me quit the app again. I'm gonna run the command me tool with a different command, which is, um, let's put in a little smiley face or a little angel. I'm an angel and we'll pass that and we can see that the result is actually passed to our commit or to our main application and uh, yeah everything works as we expected obviously in a production app you probably want to get rid of this print statement here so um, you know i'll leave that up to you <laughs> if you want to delete that but it's uh, useful for our debugging purposes uh, in this case here 
So hopefully uh, that is enough for you guys to understand how you can uh, run things from a command line tool and communicate with your main GUI applications. I'll see you in another tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.